Hello, hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, guys. Welcome back to the Schwa Mill, where every single Saturday at this time we help you to craft your accent. Our goal is to give you some guidance on the four keys to a natural accent, which again are placement, breath, pitch, and trying to weaken consonant sounds. We're going to be listening to audio files that you send us. And to guide you in this process, I will be your host. My name is Jeff. It rhymes with breath, which again is one of those four keys to a natural English accent. And I want to show you just the kind of general process in case you are interested in getting your pronunciation checked. How can we do that? How can we actually hear what you are doing? Well, what you'll need to do is you will need to go to our Google document. The chat, you'll be able to see that we already have a couple of people who have sent files. So in case you want to join us, it's your own pronunciation looked at. If you're feeling brave or adventurous today, you can go to uh, this link here. This is what the document looks like. You're going to see up top, it's going to direct you to a website called vocaroo.com. This is what vocaroo.com looks like. So what you're going to see is a big fat red record button. You press the record button. It starts recording your voice. You end it. You click save and share gives you a link, you take the link, you copy and paste it to our document, and then you are good to go. We'll be able to hear you. That's all you need to do. If you want to help me out a little more, you can write your name. You can also write the text that you would like us to, or that you used of what you said. Those are just things that can be helpful because let's be honest, we're dealing with accents, but we're also dealing with technology. We're talking to each other thousands of miles away. Things can happen. We're using microphones, so we want to make sure we're understanding you okay, so I can give you the best feedback possible. Let's see everyone who's here. Edward has been very patiently waiting. Thanks to you. Emmanuel says hello. He also notes that we moved back to stream the main show. Yep. Just as it, I just want to test uh, something really quick and see. Uh, hello to Shok. Hello to Zabeda's checking in. Where has she been? Wow, look at that. Out of the woodwork, stop by. We appreciate that. Yeah, a couple of quick little announcement things before we get into this. I'm gonna have to share my screen again. Hey, one moment, see if you can see this again. So, we are in the middle of organizing another workshop, it's another live class. This is going to be targeting consonant sounds. We're targeting consonant sounds because some people are going to be like, Jeff, I already know consonants. There's My language has the same ones. Yeah, but they're pronounced a little bit differently. Like, for instance, the L sound in American English often sounds like oh, 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 or like the R sound sounds like ruh, ruh, or that N sound. A lot of people are doing like a n, n versus like an n, n, or the T sound, which can become silent or sound like a t or a duh. Um, or even just like a held sound. So there's so many different options for these consonants and they can have a very big impact on vowel sounds if you're not careful. So we're gonna be working through all of these to make sure everyone's pronouncing them in a way that sounds as natural as possible. If you want information, this is a very limited thing. So we're only gonna have four students on screen with me and then we will have some people who can also view um, kind of like what we're doing today where you can be in the chat, you can watch and things like that. So if that sounds like something you are interested in, we're going to be holding this on November, I believe it's the 6th, whatever that Monday is. I believe it's November 6th. We're going to be holding it. So if you are interested, something that you want to stop by and find more information about, what you'll want to do, we have a WhatsApp group. We're just kind of taking people in right now. This is the place where I'm sharing all of the key information. So if this sounds like something that you're interested in, you want to work with me in a small group setting focusing on consonant sounds, join this WhatsApp group. Um, I play, place it right into the chat. I'm there. So you actually get to talk to me there. You can ask me other questions. And things. Happy to do my best to answer there. Um, but please check that out. That is a big, big thing that we are in the middle of organizing right now. It would be great to work with you. The, it will also be available afterwards uh, for purchase as a video course. Just a, not able to attend live. Besides that, 
we'll talk about some of our other pronunciation services and things as we get into things. Um, may I ask a question about the time it said 10 a.m. on the group? Yep, so that's what we're looking at right now. So 10 a.m. on Monday the 6th. This is New York time. 10 a.m. New York time on that Monday. That sounds like something you are interested in. Feel free to join that uh, WhatsApp group so that way we can keep you informed as we get closer to date. All right, I think that wraps up the big announcement for now. So let's actually start looking at your pronunciation files and getting you some feedback. What do you say? Oh, let me let me add myself there, right? Again, it's not little, it's more little. Um, The G host was... Are you feeling that here, here, or here? <laughs> All right, I have my headphones on. So now I'm going to be able to hear your files. Uh, we'll be able to go through things together. There is, like I said, still time if you want to send in your pronunciation file for us to take a look at. Let us look at our sh files, audios, and things like that. All right, I'm now sharing my screen. I'm sharing my sound so you guys will be able to hear what I hear, see what I see. Let's take a listen. So every morning when I go... Start with this one. Okay, give me one sec. We'll find the text. Listen to chat. And as we do this, I encourage you kind of listen to it and see if you can get an idea of what I'm going to say. I have to find it. Okay, let's take a listen to this. So every morning when I go for a run, I feel fresh and alive. Uh, I mean, this is definitely my favorite hobby. Uh, previously, I used to run as part of a team, uh, you know, my buddies. But now I'm running alone, and I can choose my own routes. And I also know running is healthy for me because it keeps my heart and lungs strong and active. So, thanks to Sigma for sending this file. Uh, what I will say... It almost kind of sounds like an advertisement. Uh, and I want to find ways to make this sound more conversational. Um, and I think some of it has to do with intonation patterns. Some of it has to do with thought groups and linking and breath. So let's let's listen again from the beginning. So every morning when I go for a run. I so every morning when I go for a run. So every morning when I go for a run. I see also Edward has asking question. 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 How do you pronounce the root? I would say root. Some people say route as well. So you hear root or route. I personally say root, but you'll hear both. Let's listen to this again. So every morning when I go for a run. Every morning when I go for a run. So, so the thing here is that you have two thought groups. So you have so every morning, and then you kind of have a break, and you say, when I go for a run. But one of the things that we talked about with thought groups is that a lot of times in American English, when you switch from one thought group to the next, what you want to do is you want to change the pitch level. Again, it's kind of like the floors of an elevator. So if your first thought group is on the eighth floor. So every morning. When so every morning, so we're on the eighth floor, your next thought group needs to move. It's either going to go maybe down to like the the seventh floor, or maybe it's going to go up to the ninth floor, but it needs to be on a slightly different level. Otherwise, it's going to sound a little bit flat. And at worst, it can actually make it harder for people to understand you. And naturally, we don't want that to happen. So every morning when I go for... You can hear it morning, when I, morning, when I, morning, when I. So what's happening here, even as you're transitioning from one thought group to the next, because the pitch isn't changing, it's kind of catching your listener off balance. Um, I would have maybe taken it lower. So, so, so every morning when I go for a run. So every morning when I go for a run. But you could also go higher. So every, so every morning when I go for a run. So every morning when I go for a run. So those are your two options in terms of pitch levels for uh, switching between thought groups. Another option, though, would be to just, uh, instead of having two thought groups, just having one. Like, so every morning when I go for a run. So every morning when I go for a run. So notice that now, instead of stressing every and run, I'm now just stressing every. So every morning when I go for a run, so every morning when I go for a run, so I think that's another way that really would smooth this out. It's just using one thought group, stress on every. And the key you can really use to make this sound like it's only one thought group is remove the other stresses. So make sure you don't go up in pitch on any other syllable. Just keep going down. English in general wants to move down. 
Every morning when I go for a run. Every morning when I go for a run. So every morning when I go for a run, I feel fresh and alive. I feel, I feel fresh and alive. Another element of contrast. So we just talked about contrast with pitch, something you can do with your thought groups. Another element that you can start incorporating too is playing around with your contrast with speed. Right now you're kind of saying everything at about the same pace. So every morning when I go for a run, I feel fresh and alive. So every morning when I go for a run, I feel fresh and alive. It's just everything is like moving at the same pace. And you can also play around with the speed of what we say. So maybe these adjectives seem like relatively strong adjective with the fresh and then alive. So I would maybe drag those out. I feel fresh and alive. Like so every morning when I go for a run, I feel fresh and alive. Like just kind of play around with the speed a little bit. And that's going to help add some more contrast to your speech as well to give it a more natural sense. Go on. I mean, this is definitely my favorite hobby. I mean, this is definitely my favorite hobby. Uh, Talk really quick about filler words here. So you have this I mean. So there's lots of different filler words in every language. Uh, I mean is one of them. Uh, it's also like, you know, or like, or um, or uh, lots of different types of filler words, right? Um, so what we can do in this case, you're using a higher pitch for your soccer. I mean, my favorite hobby. Uh, fresh and alive uh, i mean this is fresh and alive i mean a lot of times though with these filler words that are starting a new thought group not always because it's not a rule that always applies but something that you do commonly see is those filler words because they're not very important and they're not really adding meaning necessarily to what you're saying they have more of kind of like a a function of just establishing connection between you and your listener what i what i think you're often going to find is that the pitches tend to be lower I feel fresh and alive. I mean, this is definitely, I mean, this is definitely, so you see what I did there? I mean, it's so low in pitch. I mean, this is definitely, I mean, this is definitely, um, it's also very fast. So that's just another thing I, I would play around with there that I think might help that sound more natural and add more contrast. Uh, I mean, this is definitely my favorite hobby. Definitely my favorite hobby. I mean, this is definitely my favorite hobby. I mean, this is definitely my favorite hobby. This is definitely my favorite hobby. I, again, kind of like what I talked about earlier, I would consider just making this a single thought group. And I would stress definitely. There's some words in English that just are very frequently stressed. Uh, definitely. A lot of your adverbs a degree, like definitely or absolutely or really. Um, sometimes even very, very not as often, but very can be. So I, I would put a lot of the weight on definitely. I mean, this is definitely my favorite hobby. I mean, this is definitely my favorite hobby. So that's what I would have done there that I think would have ha sounded maybe just a little bit more natural. This is definitely my favorite hobby. I mean, this is definitely my favorite hobby. Because otherwise you're staying very flat. This is definitely my favorite hobby. This is definitely my favorite hobby. You can hear the difference there. The pitch is, again, I'm just using a wider range. I'll keep rolling. Uh, previously, I used to run as part of a team, uh, you know, my buddies. That sentence there probably has your greatest contrast. That had the greatest movement. You see, I used to run as part of a team, uh, you know, my buddies. You could add even more on the used to run as part of a team part. Previously, I used to run as part of a team, you know, my buddies. Previously, I used to run as part of a team, you know, my buddies. Something like that with that little parent, you know, my buddies, you know, my buddies, you know, my buddies. Maybe even treating that, you know, my buddies part as a, as a, its own little thought group, stress on buddies. And take everything lower. You know my buddies. You know my buddies. You know my buddies. Previously, I used to run as part of a team. You know my buddies. Previously, I used to run as part of a team. You know my buddies. So that's just something to play around with uh, pitch-wise there. Keep rolling. Team, uh, you know my buddies. But now I'm running alone. And I can choose my own routes. And I also know running is healthy. But that own roots part. Buddies. But now I'm running alone, and I can choose my own routes. I'm running alone, and I can choose my... I like to pitch shift there. Now I'm running alone, and I can choose my... I think... Um, so you're stressing roots. Roots is fine. A lot of times when you see the word own, own is one of those words, again, that very frequently gets stressed. So I personally maybe would have stressed own. I can choose my own roots. I can choose my own roots. Because that, that would imply more that in the past you couldn't do that. You didn't have that control. Yeah, you were with your friends, but you couldn't choose your own roots. But now you can. I can choose my own roots. Go on. And I can choose my own roots. 
And I also know running is healthy for me because it keeps my heart and lungs strong and active. Yeah, one final comment for this. Uh, so you're saying, I know running is healthy for me. And I also know running is healthy for me because... I also know running is healthy for me. A lot of times, me and other pronouns, like I, you, he, she, it, we, you, they, or object pronouns too, like me, her, him, them. Pronouns are not generally stressed. These they're, They fall into a group called... Uh, function words because they don't really have a ton of meaning in of themselves versus like adjectives nouns and things like that so typically they're not stressed so instead of stressing me i would have probably stressed healthy i know running is healthy for me and i also know running is healthy for me so i was stressed healthy i know I also know running is healthy for me because it keeps my heart and lungs strong and active so that's uh, just my big suggestions there. I'm going to read this entire thing, then we'll move on to our next file. Uh, thanks, Stickmore, for sending this. So every morning when I go for a run, I feel fresh and alive. I mean, I mean, this is definitely my favorite hobby. Previously, I used to run as part of a team, you, you know, my, my buddies. But now I'm running alone, and I can choose my own routes. I also know running is healthy for me because it keeps my heart and lungs strong and active. And like that. Thank you to... Sycamore for sending that file. Greatly appreciate you doing that. Before we get to our next things, guys, I just want to kind of let you know about some of the things we do. So this is the Schwabel, in case you're just joining us. Hi, my name's Jeff, runs with breath. One of the four keys to a natural American English accent. You heard us talking a lot about pitch um, and things there in the last one. So pitch, breath, placement, trying to weak. These are all super, super valuable skills you need to achieve that natural sound. Perhaps the thing that's the most important is when you're studying pronunciation, it needs to be something that you're taking a look at every single day. It's the weekend. So I'm glad you guys are getting a little bit of pronunciation practice in if you're watching this, if you're watching it live with me. Uh, because again, weekends tend to be times. Maybe we fall out of our routines. Maybe we don't have people to talk to, native speakers, some things. So it's really, really imperative that if your goal is to make significant change in your pronunciation, you're finding ways to study a little bit every day. And I'm really excited because we have several different ways you can do that. Um, on our main channel here, we have Monday through Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at 8 a.m. New York. We have a, a daily stream called Wake Up American where I just give you a couple quick practice exercises so you can get your five, 10 minutes of studying in every day. But the only issue with that is that I can't hear you, you know, so I, so I can't listen to you and give you suggestions. So we have a couple different other things we provide so that way we can hear you and give you suggestions kind of like the schwa mill today but doing it every single day of the week our first option is a telegram group in the telegram group every day i send in a group of words to say and then members can send in their own audio files you can see examples over there and then i listen to you and give suggestions hmm give me one sec please hmm I'm gonna check to make sure you guys can still hear my audio. Check, check, one, two. I'm going to add another camera. What? It lets me. Hmm. Frozen Jeff. And then there's me. Hi. Camera froze, but the audio is good. Interesting. Let me try one thing for the other camera. Live streaming. Okay. I am going to restart. I'm going to restart the other camera. Uh, give me one second. I will be right back. One moment. Watch this in the meantime. You were probably in school years ago when your nice English teacher taught you to say these words wrong. All contain vowel sounds that consonants can transform into horrible, horrible monsters. We are hunting down consonants starting with the letter L. Say these words to yourself really quick. Real, girl, milk, roll, cool. 
Did you say them like I did? If not, it's because when the letter L comes at the end of a word, you want to make sure of these things. The tip of your tongue is down. The back of your tongue is high. There is enough air moving through your throat. It's like a consonant sound it becomes a vowel sound like ah, uh, ah. Uh. Let's try them again then, shall we? All right. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Man, I like in that video. Yes, that was a fun one to make. Um, what was I saying? Oh, like I said, so we have a group on Telegram where every single day people can send in their own pronunciation files and we listen to them and give them feedback. So if you're the kind of person that wants to get feedback on your pronunciation every day from a professional coach, that's what the pronunciation group is for on Telegram. We also have a group called Mission English. Mission English is basically a small group pronunciation class that we hold two times a day. This is the schedule we have. So you can see we meet at either 9.30 in the morning, New York, 1.30 p.m. New York, or 8 o'clock p.m. New York time. You join me on screen. We do exercises together. All of the classes are saved. And starting in November, it's going to be private. So we've been using Facebook, but it's no longer going to be on Facebook. It's going to be private. So in case you have social media concerns, it will no longer be there. So just some things to consider. If any of those things sound interesting to you, here is how you this can join. Com for all of our pronunciation services, including memberships, including our daily Telegram program, where you send in files every day and get corrections from us. Mission English, where we meet twice a day in live stream classes, and also our paid video courses so you can start learning right away i've seen that we also have a free video course called four step american accent which walks you through how to use placement pitch breath and weakening your constant sounds i do have to note we are down to six new members for our telegram group before it closes and we'll have to put you on a wait list so if you're interested in the telegram group we have six spots left in terms of the mission english group we have seven spots left before that price is going to go up for new members i guess just heads up on those things let's get back to your pronunciation files shall we give me a moment let us see what we got here All right, so what file is this? Send us their audiobook. All right, let's see what they got for this file. Oh, it's not sharing my audio. Rewind that. Take two, guys. Take two. Try not to get yelled at over here. See if this one works now. Be here. I like to learn about things. It's pretty depressing. So the answer to the question, I think, is, you know, we have little bits of understanding glimpses, a little bit of flight here and there, but a tremendous amount of challenge. You know, it being life to be pretty boring if we understood everything better, if we don't understand anything and know that we don't do important things. Okay, so my biggest thing here is we just sound very, very flat. Okay, so the before anything, what we're really going to be targeting here is trying to add greater contrast, especially in terms of pitches as we switch thought groups, uh, but maybe also playing with, with some speed and things like that as well. This one. Okay, so our main goal is going to be trying to add elements of contrast to this to try to achieve a sound that I think is going to be a little bit more natural. Uh, actually, any other views? So you see me. So, having said that, first part. I like to learn about things. It's pretty depressing. So the answer. Okay, everything just sounds very similar again. Let's hear it again. I like to learn about things. It's pretty depressing. So. But I'd like, so that part I think sounds pretty good. I can clearly hear the stress on like. I'd like to learn about. I'd like to learn about. Good. What I'd like to learn about. Good. Good contrast there. I'd like to learn about things. It's pretty depressing. So the. Depressing. That part, now we're starting to fall into that very flat section. What I'd like to learn about things is pretty depressing. Uh, what I'd like to learn about things. My guess is, in this heart, if you're shadowing. Please take everything I say with a grain of salt. 
okay because based off you know if this is how the native speaker sounded when you were trying to copy them then you know i can't help that it's just based on what i'm hearing um i personally would like more contrast in that second part maybe going lower in pitch but i like to learn about things it's pretty depressing so I like to learn about things. It's it's pretty depressing. Do you hear that shift there? Well, I'd like to learn about things. It's it's pretty depressing. Just kind of playing around with pitch more to add more contrast so it sounds less flat. It's pretty depressing. So the answer to the question. So again, what I'd like to learn about things is pretty depressing. So the answer to the question, again, it's so flat. So I would treat this three thought groups. What I'd like to learn about things is it's pretty depressing. So So the answer to the question... Do you hear the differences there? What I like to learn about things, we're a little higher. Then we go down. It's just pretty depressing. Then we go higher again. So the answer to the question, I think, is so just adding that little contrast of pitch would be very, very helpful. I like to learn about things. It's pretty depressing. So the answer to the question. The other thing is, I think we're using a lot of rising intonation. It's like rising is changed like this, this, this versus falling intonation, which is like this, this, this. Hear that difference there. I like to learn about things. It's pretty depressing. So the answer to the question. So what I'd like to learn about things rising, it's pretty depressing rising. So the answer rising to the question rising. What I'd like to learn about things, maybe even a falling intonation. What I'd like to learn about things, uh, it's pretty depressing. Uh, so you could use a rising intonation there, maybe. Uh, so the answer to the question. So maybe a, a falling intonation there. And you can mix this up. You know, it's not like everything has to be a fall where I said it, or everything has to be a rise. But try to, like, add a little bit more balance, because right now we're just using the same patterns. And if there's anything English does not like, it does not like when things become predictable. It does not like when things get, become into a pattern, turn almost like sing-songy. Um, English does not like that. It likes contrast. It likes surprise and, and shifts. I think is, you know, you know, so if this is shadow, I'll go back to that part and see how heavy that is. Cause there's a good chance that that's actually a very reduced section. Cause again, it's a filler word. It's not really mean anything. It could just be like, is, you know, we have is, you know, we have, so see how weak and fast the, you know, part could be. You know, we have little bits of understanding glimpses, a little bit of light. That so the thought groups there really ran together, so it was a little bit tricky to understand. Understanding glimpses, a little bit of light. Understanding a little bit of that part is getting very kind of uh, a little bit tricky to follow. Um, this is where having more contrast in your thought groups again would be very helpful from a listening perspective. Bits of understanding glimpses, a little bit of light. We have little bits of understanding glimpses, a little bit of understanding glimpses, a little bit of light. Do you hear the difference in contrast there? It's like we have little bits of understanding glimpses, a little bit of light. Do you hear the little bit of understanding glimpses, a little bit of light? Just like adding the pitch difference there is going to make it so much easier for your listener. Bits of understanding glimpses, a little bit of light here and there, but I want to hear here and there again. Any glimpse a little bit of light here and there, but slight rolling R on here, like here and here and versus here and remember American English, we really can't roll our R's. That can be a sign that your placement is high. So it sounds like you're talking like up here versus talking with your diaphragm. Usually you're getting your diaphragm more involved. Any glimpse a little bit of light here and there, but here and there versus here and there, here and there. A glimpse of a little bit of light here and there, but it's just another quick thing about linking. So you have here and there. A lot of times, what happens, not always, but a lot of times, what happens with uh, when you have an N sound that comes before a TH. So we can see this with the N there. Um, so when you have an N sound that comes before a TH, what can happen is the TH sound actually gets removed and instead you kind of just add another n sound so instead of here and there and there it becomes here and there hear a difference and there and there and there and there here and there here and there can you hear the difference um, so it's not that you have to do that it's just a, a common strategy that you may hear native speakers using quote roland a little bit of flight here and there but a tremendous amount of challenge tremendous amount of ch okay so a tremendous amount of challenge fine uh Good pitch shift. 
we finally got some movement in the pitch. And there, but a tremendous amount of. Yeah, you know, here and there, but a tremendous amount. Good. So we raised everything higher. That adds some contrast. So it's a lot easier to follow. Great move there. I like that. Here and there, but a tremendous amount of challenge. Here the butter. Here and there, but a tremendous. But the, but the. Yeah, I mean, you can use a T sound. That certainly is possible. I think the more frequent way to link a T when it's surrounded by vowels, you have the uh sound before it, you have the uh sound after it as well. So instead of saying but, uh, I think you're more commonly going to hear but, uh, but uh, with a fast D sound. When you have a vowel plus a T plus a vowel, very often it makes a fast D. It's so like but, uh, but, uh, but a tremendous. There, but a tremendous amount of challenge. You know, it being life to be pretty boring. If so being life to be pretty boring. Okay, in general, that's okay. If we understood everything better. If we don't understand anything and know that we don't. Okay, this last part again is getting a little bit flat. Everything better. If we don't understand anything and know that we don't. It's an important thing. If we don't understand anything and know that we don't. If we don't understand anything and no, if we don't understand anything and that part is just again a little bit too flat. Because I don't know what you're stressing. If we don't understand anything. If we don't understand anything and no. Don't understand anything. I'm guessing you're stressing anything. So if you're stressing anything, just keep in mind for your thought group. If you have a stress, okay, and the stress is coming towards the end of your thought group then that means all the parts before it need to be moving down in pitch. Okay. If we don't understand anything, if we don't understand anything, if we don't understand anything, because before we're just saying, if we don't understand any, it's just too flat. If we don't understand anything, just adding that little movement there is really going to make that more dynamic and easier for your listener to follow. Sure. If we don't understand anything and know that we don't, it's an important thing. Uh, like but I think you had this intention of that thought group, the next one, and know that we don't. I think you wanted to go uh, high there. If we don't understand anything and know that we don't, it's important Know that we don't. But I would take it even higher if we, if we don't understand anything and know that we don't. Like go, go even higher if we don't understand anything and know that we don't. That's the important part. Uh, if we don't understand anything and know that we don't just want to hear anything sir. if we don't understand anything and anything anything um a couple things here uh so I'm, I'm very clearly hearing every single syllable so i, I do think your the clarity is sir. good if we don't understand anything and anything but i think we have an opportunity here to use more reductions and make the stress it worse so anything uh, anything is three syllables. Your stress is on N, the first syllable. N, anything. And that means the other two syllables are not stressed. So that means they're going to go down in pitch. We can also weaken the other two syllables because they're not stressed. So that means we can say them faster, lower pitch, make them weaker. So instead of anything, if you come, anything. Um, if you don't understand anything, if we don't understand anything, you know, almost just focus on the vowels, like anything, eh. E -ing. E -ing. E -ing. E -ing. anything anything if we don't understand anything so I say anything anything if we don't understand anything it's just a, another thing to kind of pay attention to for words of multiple syllables all right that already is a ton of information um shok thank you so much for sending that file we greatly appreciate you was that one out next files are much shorter. Wow. Very, very shorter. Okay. Look, and again, if you're watching us and you're like, oh, what is even happening? Hi. Let's go. My name is Jeff. Rhymes with breath. One to four keys to American English accent. We are taking a look at pronunciation files that you send to us. So that way we can give you feedback and suggestions on how to achieve a more natural sound in American English. A reminder as well. We have up, coming up very, very soon. Very soon, matter of weeks, we're doing a workshop on consonant sounds that you can register for. It's a small group class. Four students will be on screen with me. Other students will be able to watch. 
Okay, we're specifically targeting L, R, N, and T sounds. We're targeting these sounds because we see it over and over again. Students are mispronouncing these letters, and these letters are having a huge impact on the quality of people's words because they are modifying how your vowel sounds sound. If your vowel sounds don't sound right, then your whole word can start sounding very odd. We want to target all of these consonant sounds to make sure that you have an idea um, how to get these words sounding more natural when you talk. If this sounds like something you're interested in, it's going to be Monday, November 6th. We would love to have you there. If you're looking for more information, you want to know how to register for the course and things like that, because spaces are very, very limited, especially if you want to be one of the students that is on screen with me. Definitely something that um, you want to make sure that you have the knowledge on because that space is going to fill up. I promise you it's going to fill up. And if you want it, then you need to make sure you're in the group. You can find it here. So we have a WhatsApp group right now. This is where I'm sharing all the new information. On Monday, we are opening up for registration. Okay, so if you want to be able to sign up and claim one of those four seats uh, that are on screen with me, or even seats in the audience, then you need to make sure that you register there um, in our WhatsApp group. And then when things actually open up for seats, you will be the first to know and be able to get a discount and things like that when it opens up. It's just a note. Emmanuel says, can't wait. Yes, it's going to be very, very fun. I'm looking forward to it. Ugh, I should have gotten water. I forgot. I bring water over here. But that's all right. The next uh, couple of files are very, very short. If you would like me to look at your pronunciation, we have two files left in the list. Let's take a look at yours, but you need to get it in soon. Head out. Here is how you can do that. Go to this link. Fill out the document. We will then be able to hear your voice. See someone is thinking about it. Hello, anonymous ferret. I see you there. Want me to look at your pronunciation? Put a file there very, very soon. I was hoping Elchin, I know Elchin stopped by the stream last week. I was hoping he would leave a file, but that is not. All right, I need to share my audio file. See what we got. Here. I can't remember the name of the person who recommended this book to me. Okay. Mr. Handles is our cup. Yeah, I, I think he's in the wash right now, unfortunately. So I don't even think even if I had him, I couldn't. Uh, Amanda, if you could let me know, was this from shadowing or is this just you? Speaking to other man, this is their file. Let us see what pronunciation suggestions can we give for this? Listen to yourself. See if you guys can get an idea. Not shadowing. Okay. I can't remember the name of the person who recommended this book to me. I can't remember the name of the person who recommended this book to me. I can't remember the name of the person who recommended this book to me. So I can hear you. I'm here in two thought groups. I can't remember the name of the person. First thought group. Book to me. Second thought group. Cool. I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I can hear the difference. I can hear the pitch shifting as you go from one thought group to the next, which is great. Those are all things we want to be happening. I can't remember the name of the person who recommended this book to me. Now, it does feel like the placement's a little bit high. It almost feels like we're kind of talking like top of... I can't remember the name of the person who recommended this book to me versus the way I would say it with a lower placement would be, I can't remember the name of the person who recommended this book to me. Like, I can't remember the name of this person who recommended the book uh, to me. The placement feels a little high. Um, you can experiment. I can't remember the name of the person. It's like, for instance, like let's use the word name. Okay, so let's just use, if you're trying to lower the placement on something, take a word and just maybe like go down five times, like name, 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 name. I can't remember the name. 
I can't remember the name. I'm trying to use that where those lower placements were. I'm trying to use that for name. So again, name, 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 name. I can't remember the name. I can't remember the name of the person. I can't remember the name. Of the person. You can do it with whole phrases too. I can't remember the name of the person. I can't remember the. I can't remember the name of the person. 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 You know, so I'm just experimenting with different placements, shutting things down to to see what those would sound like. Because again, it just sounds a little high. Besides that, I can't remember the name of the. I like the linking from can't to remember. I like that held T. I think it sounds pretty good. I can't remember the name of the person. Name of the. So it sounds like we're stressing name, which is fine. I can't remember the name. Remember the name of the person. But I, I don't know. Why are we slowing down on person? You know, the person. The person. I can't remember the name of the person. Like, I, I just I don't know why we're going so slow there. I can't remember the name of the person. Um, so I would go a little faster on person. It also sounds to me, let's hear person. I remember the name of the person. The person. The person. Person, 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 person. Do you know the difference between like person and person? Per, 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 per. I think the back of your tongue's a little low. Um, so yeah, I would try to get work on that that er sound a little bit. Can you do like er per person, er per person, er per person? The name of the person. I can't remember the name of the person. Person. Another person, another person, another person, person, person. I think the the sin is okay. You could even get more of a short I sound. Um, it's like in person, person, person. Having a little crispier short I sound would also help give you a more natural sound as well. I think person, another person, the name of the person. Okay, <laughs> intermediate says they went a little bit overboard. <laughs> Intonation, yeah, it doesn't have to be so so heavy. <laughs> I can't remember the name of the person. I can't remember the name of the person who who recommend. Let's listen to the second half of this. Um, I can't remember the name of the person. Person who recommended this book to me. Person who recommended this book to me. Recommended this book to a little flat. Person who recommended this book to me. So, book is your stress, and I can hear that. I can hear the stress very clearly. Person recommend this book to me. Recommend this book to me. Something that I think, again, is very common is right before your stressed word is the syllable before it often goes a little bit lower in pitch, like even more so. You can slightly exaggerate. Recommended this book to me. I would go lower on this. Recommend this book to me. Recommend this book to me. I said, recommend this book to me. Recommend this book to me. That's kind of what I'm hearing. Person recommend this book to me. Recommended this book. Versus recommended this book. Do you hear the difference there? Recommended this book. Recommended this book. Do you hear the difference? So by having that little lower pitch on this, it just allows the book to kind of stand out even more, which is important because that's your stressed word. Um, person who recommended this book to me. Here, recommended. Person who recommended this Person who recommended this Person who Rick. It sounds like saying Rick. Rick. Who recommended this Who recommended this Who recommended this Rick, Rick, Rick. Who rec, who rec, who rec. So your placement's a little high also on rec. Okay. I mean, I think the we talked earlier. I think the whole sentence is a little high placement, but I would try to lower the placement on rec. So I say rec, 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 more rec, rec, rec. Who recommended? Who recommended this? Who recommended this? Recommended. Who recommended? It's just a little lower on that rec uh, sound. Book to me. Um, you could also go the book to me part. The to me part's okay. You could go even weaker if you want to me. To me. Book to me. Book to me. Book to me. Recommend this book to me. This book to me. This book to me. Book to me. Book to me. Versus book. Book to me. You should go even faster on there if you want. But that's, that's all pretty minor stuff. Um, the biggest thing, though, I think, again, is just going to be kind of placement for the overall sentence because everything sounded a little high. Um, can't remember the name of the person who recommended this book to me. Can't remember the name of this person who recommended this. Yeah. Other things, again, like when you're joining thought groups, I can't remember the name of the person who, who recommended this. Like repeating words and things like that. I can't remember the name of the person who, who recommended this book to me. Or even in the middle of the thought groups, who recommended this this book to me. Like repeating this, who recommended this this book to me. Something like that. Again, a technique you'll hear. A nice speaker's doing a lot. Thank you to Emmanuel for sending that file. Appreciate you as always. 
All right. We lost our ferret friend. I don't know where they went. So if they don't send something, that means I have one file left. That file belongs to Marcos, if I can find it. Yep. That means that if you're interested in getting your own feedback for your pronunciation, now is the time. You can do that by going to this Google Documents. Missing your file here. Follow the directions. Go to vocaroo.com. Record yourself. And by the way, if you're watching us in the future, hey, from the past, you're watching old Jeff. What you want to do is you can still use this Google Doc. You can go down here and you can put in a file and just say save for next stream. Type that in. I will see it and I will save the file. So if you're watching this in the future, that's all you need to do. I'll be able to. Um, all right, but regardless, we got Marcos potentially finishing us off for today. Sweet file, it's a short one. Let's see what we got. My grandmother lived in the same house from the cradle to the grave. My grandmother lived in the same house from the cradle to the grave. Okay. Good idea here. I think it's fine. Very clear. Very understandable. I think that you, you've broken this up into three thought groups. My grandmother lived in the same house from the cradle to the grave. No, you got four thought groups. Okay. This is not like a long sentence, but you have four thought groups here. My grandmother lived in the same house from the cradle to the grave. Okay. So a lot of sections there. And what happens is when you have that occur in a sentence. And you can do this. There's nothing wrong with that by itself. And you certainly can do that, especially if you have enough pitches and you're linking your thought groups in a way that sounds natural and you're carrying the breath, low placement. You're like Those are all things. You can certainly hear Nasberg is doing this in the right situation. I see a lot of people who learned English, though, doing this more frequently than I see native speakers doing it. And the issue that can occur is that when you have a sentence with when you have a sentence with more thought groups, what happens is you're adding more stresses, okay? Because every thought group has one stressed word that typically receives heavy emphasis, okay? And that again is not necessarily a problem, but if you have very short thought groups all the time, you never really have a runway, so we never get to explore the lower pitches and things like that. We get stuck. We're constantly restarting, and that can result in a choppier sentence. The flow isn't as natural as it could be, and I think that's kind of what we're getting here a little bit. My grandmother lived in the same house from the cradle to the grave. My grandmother lived in the same house from the cradle to the grave. So let's... Um, Let's maybe do three thought groups or two thought groups instead of instead of uh, four. Cradle, girl, the same house from the cradle. Let's maybe do one thought group. Let's like just experiment for experimenting sake. Uh, let's do one thought group that goes all the way to cradle. Let's stress cradle. Okay, so if we have one thought group and the stress is just on cradle, we're gonna be really moving down a lot. My grandmother lived in the same house from the cradle. My grandmother lived in the same house from the cradle. My grandmother, the, uh, my grandmother lived in the same house from the cradle. Then our second thought group to the grave. My grandmother lived in the same house from the cradle to the grave. My grandmother lived in the same house from the cradle to the grave. From the cradle to the grave. My grandmother lived in the same house from the cradle to the grave. Something, something like that, I think, was just going to allow you to flow so much more than having all these stresses and things. Aside from that, uh, pronunciation-wise, let's listen to some things. My grandmother lived in the Grandmother. Okay, so grandmother, so grandmother is a compound noun. You have grand and you have mother. When you have a compound noun in English, you stress the first part. So instead of grandmother, you want to stress grand. Grandmother. My grandmother. My grandmother lived. You're like grandmother. So what's happening is when you're saying ma, you're going up in pitch. So your listener is going to hear stress, even though the more common one is uh you intended to stress grand. My grandmother mother lived in the same house. Grandmother lived in the same house from the grandmother lived in the same house from the, the same house 
lived in the same house. I lived in the same house. Grandmother lived in the same house from the cradle to the grave. I'd also say when you're saying grandmother. Grandmother lived. Grandmother. Grandmother. The schwa sound on mother. I feel like I'm hearing ma, ma, grandma, grandma versus grandma, grandma. Okay. Um, so grandmother, you want a schwa sound, not an ah sound. Now this could be a placement issue. It could be that your placement's rising. So like you're trying to use a schwa sound, but it's turning into an ah just because your placement's going higher, like ah ah versus uh uh. So that that is certainly one possibility. Um, another possibility could be that your M placement is too high. Okay. Okay. So it could also be that your M sound is a high placement. So you want to make sure. Okay. So it's that when you're doing an M sound, make sure it's not. Mm, make sure it's not. Mm, gram, uh, gram, uh, okay. Grandmother. So it's not grandma, grandmother, grandmother, grandmother. You hear the difference between those. Uh, besides that. Mother live in the same house from the cradle. Mother live in the same house. You're also hearing that high placement carry over to lived. You're hearing leave, leave versus live, live with the short eye sound. So watch out for that. So it's not leave, this more lived, short eye. Might help again to bite the size of your tongue a little bit. Get some contact with your teeth and the size of your tongue. So more eh, eh, it's not le, it's more le, lived. Mother live in the same house from the cradle to the grave. Cradle, to the grave. Cradle to the grave. From the cradle to the cradle. Cradle. Again, the placement feels a little high. I would use more of a dark L, tongue down, lower placement. Oh, oh, cradle, oh, adle, cradle, oh, adle, cradle from the cradle. I just lower placement there, more of a dark L. Instead, so instead of tip my tongue touching up here for cradle, uh, 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 I do cradle, tip my tongue down, cradle to the grave. It's just another grave. Note. Some notes there for uh, Marcos. Marcos, thank you for sending that file. We appreciate that. As always, we have a question, question, question here from Edward. Edward asks us, this is from the cradle to the tomb, another variety. I mean, it's it's understandable. I think it would catch people off guard. At least I can only speak to North America. Um, it's the cradle to the grave. I've, I've never personally heard someone say from the cradle to the tomb. Also, because you lose some of the acoustics, right? You know, cradle to the grave, like you're... You have the A sound and then the A. So like um just from a sound, like a sonic quality to it, um, cradle to the grave sounds a little bit more pleasant than cradle to the tomb where you're completely changing your your vowel sounds. Uh, thank you for the question. We greatly appreciate that. All right, guys. I'm checking out our document. That's all I got. That is that's it. So what I will tell you is that I encourage you to constantly find ways to study pronunciation. We have so many different options for you. We have a pronunciation group on Telegram. In fact, I'll be checking it later today where people send in files and I listen to you and give you feedback. Okay. We are running out of spaces. We have six spaces left for that. We also have a group called Mission English. These are private small group classes that you join. It's you and two or three other students working with me at all of these times based in New York. It's a small group setting. And again, for this, we have about seven spots left. Okay, so six spots in the Telegram group, seven spots in the, tel in the Mission English group. Those are things you want to claim. If those are things that interest you. And then last but not least, we have our upcoming workshop on consonant sounds, which is just a one-time uh, class. If you would like to join, you want me to work with you on your consonant sounds um, in our setting, in our group. We're going to be focusing on L, R, N, and T. This is going to be on Monday, November 6th, right around 10 a.m. So that sounds like something you are interested in. You want to get updates on the information and you want to be able to claim a seat because seats are very limited and it looks already like it's going to be full. We haven't even opened up yet for registration. So if you want to have that chance to claim a seat, join the WhatsApp group. And then we will let people know on Monday, this upcoming Monday, that's when registration actually will open. So if that sounds like something you are interested in, please join the WhatsApp group because by the time I let people know on YouTube and things like that, the seats may already be claimed. Just a note. All right, guys, I do have to run then. 
Thank you so much for spending some time with me. Look, when it comes to American English pronunciation, there are so many resources available. I am 100% aware of that. Uh, so the fact you spent a little bit of your time, a little bit of your Saturday with me is greatly, greatly appreciated. If you're interested in all the things that we do, you can find everything at fluentamerican.com, which is the wrong for me. That one right there. Um, I will see you guys later. Again, my name is Jeff. Rise with breath. One of the four keys of the natural American English accent. I will see you all later. Have a good day. Have a good night. Have a good afternoon. And I will talk to you soon.